Video game music. It's the iconic genre that lets you know you're about to embark on a mystical adventure across the kingdom with a merry cast of misfits. Or splatter a bunch of space zombies into bloody demon goo piles. Or have your creepy uncle teach you totally sweet moves to pick up college chicks. Are you as good at the saddle as you are at sweet talking? Oh yeah, better even here, watch. I'll even if you, you have no real experience writing music for video games, or maybe you're even a developer looking to write music for your own game, I don't think it's all that hard to get started, and that's what I want to talk about in this video. Of course, a basic musical background would probably be helpful, but I think the most important things, as always, are just passion, a little bit of creativity, a willingness to learn and experiment, and so much goddamn tenacity that you're gonna figure this out, even if it kills you. So in this video, what I really want to talk about are just some of the rules and lessons I've learned for writing video game music, or perhaps more accurately, reasons I've been fired from composing gigs in the past, and what getting fired taught me, and some of the shit they're just not gonna teach you in music school. Speaking in the broadest possible terms here, I think that all video game music can effectively be boiled down into one of three categories. You have your key themes, things like the title song, the credit song, or music that occurs during other core story beats, ambient music, which is music that occurs while the player is exploring around or underneath dialogue and exposition and cutscenes in the game, and dynamic music or music that responds to the actions that the player is taking, things like combat music or other interactive music systems. For this video, I got in touch with the developer of Beneath, an upcoming game, and they were generous enough to hook me up with some footage and a brief, so let's check it out and start writing some music for this game. Obviously when we're writing game music, the brief is the law of the land, and there are many briefs like it, but this one is mine. In this game, we take on the role of Noah Quinn. We're going on an underwater adventure to a remote scientific facility where bad things are going to happen, and the music overall should convey a sense of isolation, suspense, and dread. Yippee, good stuff. And in this video, I want to show you how to work in each of these three styles of music and the core mechanics behind them. First up, we have our brief for the main title theme. Everything is pretty straightforward, and this gives us a good idea of where we're going to start. Then we have some notes for the ambient music, and we have some references is here, which is always handy. And finally, we have our combat music with just some overall notes on how the combat music in the game should feel. With all this in mind, we should have enough information to get started, so let's do it. Probably goes without saying, title themes are super important, and a lot of the developers I work with have grown up on games like Metroid and Pokemon and Mario and Zelda and these games and properties that have these super memorable themes. And I think what makes a good theme when it comes to melody is it's something that's singable, but more importantly, it's something that's singable by, say, a sixth grader playing video games at two in the morning. And that's kind of the key mission. But before I start laying down all of that, I want to just get the vibe going. I've said this before and I'll say it again, I always like to just start by getting the mood right. And what I've got here is a set of orchestral and sound design-y and synth elements that I've layered together just to create this big atmosphere. In the case of this game, underwater action, survival horror, stressful, whatever, probably isn't gonna make sense to do something like that. After a little bit of faffing about here, I came up with this. works pretty well. So now I'll just lay it down with the biggest section and then sort of work my way backwards to come up with the arrangement. Because we're going with contemporary orchestra with horror elements, I'll orchestrate out the main idea. Here the key theme is done with strings and supported by horns and some low bass. To transition to the second part for this sort of like high tide, low tide sort of feeling, I wanted to transition to a different instrument family, so I went over to some woodwinds and then decided to support those with strings, so that felt like a pretty natural transition. After that, it was time to arrange and orchestrate everything, so I brought in percussion, I brought in some additional elements, I brought in some other textures, and then spent a good amount of time using some other sort of orchestral effects, big swells and tonal clusters and things like that, just to add bits of ornamentation and color and fill everything out. For the second section and the sort of false ending, I left things pretty minimal, but I wanted this sense that 
something is beneath you, even though you are beneath the ocean, and it's gonna come out and get you. So then I let in with some really big swells and orchestral effects and textures and a couple different articulations, and then these big pounding drums that I think swell into a pretty cool ending. And that's not too shabby, and cranking it up pretty loud, it certainly terrifies me, so now's probably a good time to work on some ambient music. I think that good ambient music in games is also a pretty critical part of environmental storytelling. It not only helps to reflect what the player character or other characters might be experiencing, but it's also indicative of where they are in the game. A different level, a different region, it might have sort of a different culture or different vibe or whatever. So in this case, we're underwater, it's very industrial, there's a lot of fluorescent lighting, maybe some incandescent lights, and lots of just bits of sparks and texture and things like that. So those are kind of the things we want to invoke with our ambient cue. In order to do this, I'm just hunting for textures that reflect these things, and I found a drone, a synth pad, and a more abstract sound that seemed to fit the bill pretty well if I just hold out long, sustained tones. In this case, because we are leaning towards more atmospheric horror, we're probably going to lean more in the direction of something like dark ambient music, but because there is a request for some piano and some pulses, we might need to go a little more tonal with it. To bring things into somewhat more of a tonal center, I found two slightly more tonal things that still retain quite a bit of texture. Finally, because we do want piano, I wanted to find a piano sound that was a piano but supported by some texture and those little bits of pulsing stuff. So I just combined two different piano sounds and that gives us this. In the case of ambient and dark ambient music, I like to start by just laying down the sound beds. Then on top of this, I'll layer in the slightly more tonal elements. Then finally, I'll bring in the piano and just improvise on top of everything. And that gives us something that's pretty unsettling and works pretty well for the vibe of the game. With that being said, I would push back a little bit on this brief and say that I don't think there needs to be a tonal element to this. I think this music is better served almost feeling like the industrial hum of the air conditioners and things like that in the game, and these little tonal centers just don't feel all that necessary, and I might even prepare an alternate version for this just to support my argument. In this case, I just took the same three key elements from earlier and created a new piece that is purely dark ambient. And this is really how these basic templates come into play. When I'm scoring something, I'll write a piece of music and save that actually as a template, because by changing the key or slightly altering patches or whatever, I can pretty quickly iterate on many different pieces of ambient music for the game using just the same six or seven elements, and that way I could probably make a solid hour's worth of ambient music just out of these things. When it comes to dynamic music and combat music, I like to work in pretty much the same fashion as I do with the title cue. I'll just find the biggest point and make the peak of everything and then work with sort of subtractive arrangement to then take things away and flush it out to where it looks kind of like a hill. There's a low point, it builds and builds and builds, we hit peak stuff happening and then it goes back down, and then it's probably going to loop around again or just keep looping at the high tension points before descending down into nothing. In this case, in order to fit the big tension and gunshots and tech of everything, I just layered together three huge sounding drum loops and built everything around that. To add some tension and tonality into all of this, I brought in some electronic pulses as well as some processed orchestral stuff. Because combat music needs to start peaking and getting bigger and bigger, I also like to add in air elements, is usually what I call them, and usually these consist of things that are just more noisy and I can bring them in over time just to fill out the rest of the frequency spectrum. In this case, it was done by combining two droning elements, and it sounds like this. 
Generally speaking with this stuff, it has to be subtle enough to fill things out, but it has to be apparent enough to where if you take it away, it's noticeable. So you don't want to mix this in too much because noise is going to overtake everything, but you want it to be just there enough to where you can feel that something else is being added. Then just like the title theme, I went in and added some ornamentation with different orchestral swells and textures and just took some time to arrange these out to fill in points of tension and transition. Because combat can go on for quite some time, I think it's also important to write a B section for any combat or dynamic music. That way it can change up and just provide a little more information to the player that things are continuing on or maybe you are winning or losing. And these are all things that can actually be implemented within the game's audio engine to say, if the player's losing, start doing this. If the player's winning, start doing this. And this is why it's good to come up with a couple alternate sections. In order to do that here, I've just brought in two new drum grooves that we have not heard up until this point. Then I found some really noisy, brash, distorted synths and then processed and distorted them even more just to move into a new feel and get away from so much of the orchestral stuff just to provide a pretty clear distinction between the two sections. Arranging is probably the hardest part, and like I said, I like to just take the biggest section and copy and paste it out, and then just start changing things and making alterations to each section so it's not too overly loopy and repetitive. And when that's all said and done, generally it works out to where you have some pretty good dynamic music. You can see here, we start off very minimal. Then we slowly build into more things happening. We have a quick transition point here in the main section. We have another small break here leading into the B section. Then we go back to where we were at the beginning with a few additional and altered elements and slowly start working our way down. Then finally we circle down to the end, which is basically just the beginning again with a few added elements and this way we get a pretty satisfying loop. As one last bonus tip, this is something that's gonna depend on the game, but usually there is a certain frequency range that they want you to stick to, and I just wanna quickly demonstrate why. If we listen to some of the combat footage here and watch it in a spectrum analyzer, we can see that there's a lot of energy in the sub bass to make those gunshots feel really satisfying. There's lots of clinky bullet shells and glass shattering and other really important environmental sound effects, and we don't want our music to overtake that. If I bring in the music exactly as it is right now, we'll see that this is really just gonna start to feel overloaded and we lose a lot of clarity in the gunshots and effects. In this case, what I'm gonna do is cut a good amount of low end and really high end as well as some other key points for energy and punch and then some of the more glimmery effects of glass shattering and things like that. And by running the music through this EQ, now we get out of the way of these environmental sound effects and it actually works a lot better while retaining the same energy. This is also something we do want to consider in our arrangement, so do be mindful that you're not overtaking all the more important stuff in the game, like dialogue, sound effects, UI sounds, or the game itself, because the music is only there to supplement the game. Video game music is just so cool, and I guess what makes it so interesting and satisfying is knowing that you're working on something so much bigger and then seeing how it all comes together in the end. And that's just not a feeling you get from working on your own music and stuff like that. And it's just neat. And I know this video was spent speaking in pretty broad detail about all of this. So if you wanna learn more about all of this stuff, I've actually created a mini series on my Gumroad where I break down all the music I made for this video in absolutely excruciating detail from the ideation to the sound choices and composition and beyond and all the good stuff that's just absolute death for the YouTube algorithm. So I guess until next time. Yeah. Nico, it's Roman. Let's go bowling. Oh, God damn it.